Hey everyone, welcome to this video. I am Pranav and Rao. Today I am excited to walk you through a virtual keyboard application that I built using Qt QML and C++. This keyboard is dynamic, flexible and supports over 40 languages all rendered through a JSON file. Let's get started. Let me run this application real quick. This is the main UI of virtual keyboard. It's sleek and responsive, built to support multiple languages and layouts. As you can see, there are different rows of keys and each row adapts depending on the language or layer selected. Now let's take a closer look at row and layer switching. Each language has a specific keyboard layer such as normal, shift and alternative. When you switch between layer, you can see rows and keys also update automatically. This gives user flexibility depending on languages or typing requirement. So let me go through this application thoroughly. Each and every key you see here is functional, including the caps lock button, back button, and space button. So I was talking about layer switching. So let me show you what is layer switching. This is the layer one, which is alphabetical layer, which consists of all the alphabets. As you see here, there's a numeric button. If we click on this numeric button, we will be navigated to layer two, which is a numerical layer, which consists of all the numbers and some set of characters, important characters. And each and every buttons are functional, as I said before. So here you can see in another button, which is a characters button. If I click on this particular characters button, we will be navigated to layer three, which is characters layer. This characters layer consists of all the characters which were not available in layer two. Let me go back to layer one. I want to show you something very much interesting. If you long press on any key, I have set alternative keys. So, and suppose <coughs> the key doesn't have an alternative keys. If you long press on that, nothing is going to appear. And there's another feature. When you long press on the space button, you will be having a combo box pop-up of all the languages which I have built in, which means all the 40 languages are going to pop. For example, if I switch to Arabic, so you will be navigated to Arabic layer, Arabic keyboard. So I'm handling all these 40 languages through JSON files, as you can see here. I have maintained almost all the languages such as Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Arabic, Hebrew, Greeks, Greek, German, French, Italy, etc, etc, etc. Before I want to show you how this JSON file works, let me show the responsiveness of this particular UI. This particular application has been designed such a way that no matter which type of screens you are built, uh, which type of screen you are using this particular thing, this is going to be set. For example, if you are using for the larger screens, larger screen, the UI is going to set accordingly. Or else, you are going to use for smaller screens, such as tablets, this UI is going to work. Or you are going to use for the mobile, this UI is going to set accordingly. So let us head back to the JSON file, which I was talking about. So this is the English JSON file. Here I have uh, maintained layers. The layers which I was talking about earlier, here there are layer one, which, is, which was an alphabetic layer where I'm passing all the layers and layer two and layer three. 
this particular layer I'm rendering through C++ and I'm then <coughs> sending the model as a model in a QML UI. So the, the major reason why I have done this using JSON file is, for example, uh, a user wants to do some changes or a client wants to do some changes with this particular layout. For example, he wants to he, he wants to change the alphabets or he wants to add the alphabets or he wants to add some alternative keys or anything else. He don't have to interact with code or QML or C++ anywhere else. He will he has to just interact with a JSON file. And once he interacted with JSON file, if he do some edits over here, automatically those edit will be rendered in this particular UI. Let me show this, that example for you. As we have to <coughs> the keyboard layer over here, before I do some changes, let me explain all the properties which have been used here. This is the text property. Text is nothing but you have uh, seen there on the UI, which were being displayed. And the key property I have, I have used because uh, by using this particular key pop properties, I am going to uh, provide certain condition for some special keys. And here are the alternative keys I am handling. If you do some changes over here, everything is going to change particularly in the UI. And I have also maintained uppercase key and lowercase key. I know we have a built-in functions for uh, making the keys to upper, uppercase, uh, like such as to upper, but we are not using that because that might work in English very good, but that might not work in other languages. So, and we are also uh, giving width and height properties also, in which, for example, user wants more keys in one row itself. So he can manage the width and height based on his requirement. And even we have given color also. Color why we have given is, uh, suppose the uh, user wants a specific, uh, specific uh, special keys like check and cancel like we had that in our UI uh, before. Uh, for that he wants to give a special type of colors so he can provide it basic, basically. Let me change some of the things over here. Let me give one number over here instead of P. For example, I am giving 7. And I'm, let me change some of the alternative keys as well. So let, let me also change the color of this. Let us give red for the color. and green for the preset color. Let me save these changes and let me run it real quick. As you can see here, the color is changed and the number is, uh, the key is completely changed. Let me go through the, even user can add a language on based on his command. For example, let me add one language. I have this Hebrew language over here, which I have uh, the JSON file, which I already built it. Let me put this JSON file in our project. I copy pasted here. Let me add this. So I added this Hebrew language. Let me run our application. I'll long press on this so that a language pop-up will appear. Let me go to Hebrew, Hebrew, whether we can check it. Oh yes, as you can see, there is a Hebrew popped up over here. So basically, <laughs> I just need to add one JSON file to get the pop-up, uh, get the <coughs> language layout of that particular language. Behind the scenes, I have used QML and C++ to handle the dynamic functionality. The QML side is responsible for UI and C++ processes the logic. So that's the quick overview of virtual keyboard application. I hope you find it interesting. If you like more details walkthrough or want to learn how I structure this code and JSON file, feel free to <coughs> connect with this particular email ID I have given in this uh, description. And you can see the email ID on the screen as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech tutorials. Thanks for watching.